EJ comes to an agreement with both Sloan and Leo, and Rafe and Jada deduce, spoiler, killed Lai. After pickleball, Stephanie and Everett banter as they sit at a table in the pub. Her leg cramps up and he massages her. Stephanie remarks how glad she is that they did this. At the station, Rafe tells Jada the lab is processing the blood found on Clyde's black book. They're excited for their first real lead, but lament not being able to crack the code. Jada hopes Harris has more luck with his naval intelligence buddies. As they wait for the results, Jada tells Rafe that after going through a box full of cold case files, she's even more motivated to bring Clyde and Goldman to justice. She won't add them to the pile. As Ava and Kristen sip from mugs in front of a fire at the Dimmer mansion, Kristen reminisces about their time in the convent. Ava wants to know why she really invited her over. Failing to play innocent, Kristen admits she needs information about Lei Shin. Eric carries his camera bag as he and Nicole come to the park. She laments her disastrous Mother's Day and Holly hating her. As they wait for a contact who is late, they find Lear passed out behind the bench. At home, Sloane sighs to Jude that Eric is working with Nicole while they are home alone. Is this how it will always be? Or will it all come crashing down? A sullen EJ comes over. Deducing he got the DNA results confirming her story, Sloane asks what he's going to do about it. EJ doesn't know, but he is fascinated by how she pulled this off. He assumes she had help. Sloane says it was all her. She recounts how Dimitri showed up at her door with Jude. Since he was a fugitive, he gave her Nicole's baby to bring to the hospital herself. Since she's a lawyer, she was able to fake the paperwork on her own. Leo only found out after Dimitri blackmailed her into getting Leo's charges dropped. EJ grumbles that Dimitri had to have assumed the baby was his and still chose his lover over him. Sloane wants to know what his plan is for Leo. Regarding the cold cases at the station, Jana tells Rafe she hates not getting answers. She recounts how after she and Bobby met, he asked for help getting information on his mom, who suddenly left when he was a little boy. It haunted him even years later. Rafe asks if they'd had any good times. Jada says they did at first, but he wasn't the man she thought he was. But now... She can move on with the most wonderful man, who she loves with all her heart. They kiss. At the pub, Siphony and Everett enjoy more banter while reminiscing about Seattle. The woman Alana, who Bobby hit on the other night, enters. Bobby? Hey, she says while heading for the bar. Who was that? Siphony asks. Everett has no idea. At the Dimmer mansion, Ava insists she knows nothing about Lee's death but Kristen assumes there's something she's not saying. Ava gets defensive, but Kristen insists she's just trying to help her brother out. They're on the same page. Regardless, Ava doesn't think there's anything she can do to help. At Sloane's, Egypt ominously states he will deal with Leo. Sloane appeals to him to keep this secret so as not to blow up their respective marriages. EJ wonders what kind of amoral bastard would he be not to tell Nicole that her baby is alive. He suggests he bring Nicole her baby, but still claim it's his. Sloane doesn't think he'll want to raise Eric's son, who will eventually look and sound like him. EJ agrees, but is still unsure. Sloane begs EJ not to rip the little boy from the only family he's ever known. As Eric and Nicole help Leo to the Salem in room, Nicole asks Leo why he's doing this to himself. Leo sadly says it's because the love of his life wrote him a Dear John letter and rendered his heart broken beyond repair. Nicole promises things will get better. He asks if things got better for the two of them. They agree it did. Sure, Jan. Leo says. Whatever you two lovebirds say. He rambles about wanting to help Nicole be happier, but he doesn't want to hurt Eric. When Nicole expresses confusion, Leo says, Did E.G. not tell you? And passes out. Eric recalls Leo doing the same thing to him last time. They agree to leave to let him sleep it off. Later, E.J. gives Leo coffee. Leo doesn't remember letting him into his room and asks where Nicole and Eric are. He recalls wanting to tell them the truth about Jude, but he doesn't think he did. E.J. orders Leo never to tell them the truth. 
he holds up his phone screen to Leo who is rendered speechless. For a lifetime of his discretion, Iju will transfer him a very generous amount of money. Leo mulls it over and ultimately accepts, but looks conflicted. Ije previews the jet-setting life Leo will now be able to enjoy. However, if he ever breaks their agreement, EJ will make sure Leo doesn't have a life. He grins. Do we understand each other? Perfectly, Leo glumly says.